Hi, welcome to Your Great Journey. We offer brief tips, techniques, and insights to help you move in positive directions and master big change. For more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W E T W A R E M E D I A.com. Today, psychologist Dr. Karen Hall joins us to offer advice for emotionally sensitive people and to talk about her audiobook, The Emotionally Sensitive Person Finding Peace When Your Emotions Overwhelm You. This audiobook provides proven effective cognitive, behavioral, and mindfulness techniques that can help you manage your emotions before they take over your life. In this wide-ranging conversation, Dr. Hall offers advice for the emotionally sensitive person. An emotionally sensitive person herself, she shares one of the most powerful techniques she's learned for managing emotions and finding self-acceptance. Emotionally sensitive person is primarily for people who are emotionally sensitive. It's a guidebook on how to manage those emotions, how to accept yourself with those emotions, and what to do when your emotions are giving you pain. But it's also for people who love someone who's emotionally sensitive. It's for people who want to be able to communicate effectively with people who are emotionally sensitive. If you have an emotionally sensitive person in your life, One of the biggest gifts you could give them is to understand that sensitivity and be accepting of it. Mindfulness is about being able to focus your attention where you want to focus it. Mindfulness is about paying attention on a purpose in a particular way without judgment and with compassion. In many ways, it's about staying in the here and now. You know, if your mind jumps into the future, we've got this monkey mind, and if our mind jumps into the future, then we tend to get anxious because we don't know what's really going to happen in the future. And if our mind jumps into the past, then we tend to get depressed because we usually focus on things that were painful. If our mind is jumping around in the present, we get overwhelmed. It's like so much to do. Mindfulness helps you focus your attention just on this moment and what you're doing right now or wherever you choose to focus your attention. So in that way, it helps the emotionally sensitive person manage the emotional input that they're getting. Emotional first aid is about being able to manage emotions in the moment when your emotions are starting to take over. When you're living your life with a balance between emotions and logic, that's when you're going to be able to make the best decisions. But for emotionally sensitive people, the emotions can flood and they can take over. And when you make decisions from emotions, oftentimes you make decisions you regret. So emotional first aid is about how to lower the intensity of the emotions so that you can get the logical mind in and make more effective decisions for your life. For example, In the brain, and and when we start thinking about painful situations, let's say that a friend doesn't call you back. What the mind tends to do is to go to all the times that that friend has let you down or all the times that you've been upset with that friend. So what you can do to sort of keep that emotion from building up and, and just exploding inside of you is to stay just on the present incident. This just happened now. And to not let all the incidents from the past pile on top. That's a form of mindfulness. Another thing you can do is to not feed that emotion. If you've just had a breakup with someone you really care about, you probably want to go play the song that was your song. Don't do it. What that does is build up the pain and the hurt and the loss. So you don't want to do things that feed the emotion either. Those are just a couple of ideas 
And there are several more ideas, many more ideas actually, in the audiobook. The section in the audiobook about debunking myths is also one of the most important sections, I think. We all grow up with ideas that we don't even realize were given to us by other people. For example, when I grew up, I wasn't very athletic. I was the last one chosen for teams, and I was never the winner at softball or volleyball. And I got the idea I just wasn't athletic, and I believed that for most of my life. What I realized in my late 20s, finally, was actually I was pretty athletic. I just wasn't good at team sports. It took winning a fitness contest for me to be able to see that. People would compliment me. They would say, Karen, you build muscle pretty quickly. Or look how much weight you can lift. Look how fast you train. And I would say things like, it won't last. It's going to stop. I'm not athletic. I was shut. There was no letting that information in that I might be good at something that I believed for sure I wasn't. All of us have something that we believe for some reason is true about us and that we close off any new information or any contradictory information because we believe it so strongly and actually it's a myth. For many emotionally sensitive people, those myths have to do with not fitting in, not being accepted by other people, not being lovable, or that you don't know how to get along with other people, or that you can't handle conflict. Some of those myths you might believe about yourself. But what I want to do in this chapter is help you look to see what the truth is and maybe open your mind to new information about yourself. None of us are perfect. And the things that are true, we can work on. And we can look at them and say, okay, this is what I need to do here. But let's be sure that it's the truth and not a myth that you're believing about yourself because of experiences that you've had. One of the first steps in looking at myths that you have is being able to know they're a myth. I had no idea that I had this myth about not being physically fit. So I had to realize, wait a minute, I have gotten this feedback several times that I am pushing away and saying isn't true. I had to identify that I was holding on to an idea that other people were telling me wasn't true. So I challenge you. Are you pushing away compliments? Is there certain things people tell you about yourself and you say, oh, no, that's not true? Take a look at that. That could be one of the ways to start identifying the myths that you have about yourself. Another way is to remember what you were told when you were a child. Sometimes our parents do the very best job they can, but they're human. And they didn't have the access to all the information that we do now. So if your parents were saying things because they didn't understand your sensitivity, they may have been saying things like, you're a crybaby, you're always overreact. If those are ideas that you have in your head, let's take a look at those for sure. Because those most likely are myths. The audiobook will be helpful for many people because, number one, it's very specific. It gives very specific exercises for you to try and practice and do. In many ways, it's like an owner's manual. It, you refer to it over and over again. When you have a certain situation, when you find yourself judging, when you find yourself needing to make a decision, when you find yourself in a relationship, you refer back to the book for ideas about what you can do to handle it in the most effective way. It's also going to be a really good help for people because it's going to help you see that you are an emotionally sensitive person and accept that. And when you accept it and you stop saying, I'm horrible because I have intense emotions or I'm weak because I have intense emotions, that removes a whole layer of anxiety and upset that can be making your life miserable. So those are the two basic ways I think it'll be helpful. Thanks for listening to this conversation with Dr. Karen Hall, author of the audiobook, The Emotionally Sensitive Person. 
Finding peace when your emotions overwhelm you. You can purchase the complete audiobook from any major online audiobook retailer. If you'd like more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Please be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. And if you like the show, please rate and review it. And please share it with friends who might also enjoy it. Thanks for listening. This podcast is for information purposes only. The views expressed on this podcast are not medical or psychological advice. This podcast is offered with the understanding that the publisher is not engaged in rendering psychological, financial, legal, or other professional services. If expert assistance or counseling is needed, the service of a competent professional should be sought. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W-E-T-W-A-R-E-M-E-D-I-A dot com.